For everything there is a season, a time to die and a time to be born. With the arrival of winter's low, dark sky, communities around the world look to the miracle of light as a sign of rebirth and hope. We celebrate the promise of new life <clears throat> and recommit ourselves to the protection of everyone's right to be his, her, or their own radiant humanity. On this special night, it is a joy to look out in the sanctuary and see it filled with families and friends, laughter and love. We welcome all of you, those who are here and those attending virtually. Welcome to our Christmas Eve celebration.
gather together on this Christmas Eve as fellow sojourners looking for light, for hope, for peace, and for love. We gather as people from many backgrounds, many faiths, many cultures, and many spiritual paths. But as we light this chalice, we gather as one body looking to the nativity for its message to all of humanity. Its message is that there is light, there is hope, there is peace, and there is love. Please rise in body or spirit and join in singing the first of many carols this evening at our Christmas Eve service. Blessing of Love and Wonder by Lynn Gardner. It was getting dark, and the weary travelers needed a place to sleep. It's almost 70 miles between Nazareth and Bethlehem. And Joseph and Mary were making the long journey that was required of them in order to pay taxes to the Roman it was a long journey for everyone, but Mary's was feeling each mile a bit more than some, as she was about to give birth. And she was, oh, so tired. But there was a blessing. One of their neighbors in Nazareth had offered them a donkey for her to ride on the long trip. Kindness, <coughs> kindness can make any journey a bit easier. The trip to Bethlehem wasn't the only journey they were on. Mary and Joseph were on that exciting, sometimes nerve-wracking journey toward parenthood. It had been nine months since the angel Gabriel had appeared to Mary asking her if she would carry this child, this son of God. Here I am, she had said, let it be with me. And so with her consent, which is hopefully how all children come to be, Mary was pregnant. And there was another blessing. Her dear, sweet Joseph, who believed her, who had faith in her and in God, faith can help when times are confusing and difficult. And there in Bethlehem, this young couple was blessed with generosity, a place to stay. They were given space to rest until their baby was born. It wasn't fancy, but it was warm and safe. Out in the fields, there were shepherds watching over their sheep. It said, it is said 
that angels came announcing that a child was born. Now I would guess that shepherds don't always feel important. They might not always remember that they matter, especially when they're out in a field at night. But on that night, there was a blessing. The angels came and sang, and the shepherds not only felt hope hearing of the birth of this little baby, but they also remembered, at least for that night, that they were each precious as well. And a new star rose in the heavens, telling of the birth of one who would bring a message of peace, one who would bring change, one who would be called a king. Far away, wise ones heard, wise ones heard of the star. They went to King Herod to tell him that a new king had been born. Herod was jealous and afraid of what a new king might mean, and to and so he sent them to find the baby. And though the stories say they traveled to find him, there was a blessing. The wise ones felt compassion for this family, and they chose not to tell King Herod what they had seen. And as Jesus was held, and rocked, and snuggled, and fed, and sung to, there was a blessing of love and wonder. There they were, all the people and animals gathered around a new baby, caring for him and for one another, resting in that amazing love. Over 2,000 years later, we retell the story of Jesus' birth and of his life and teachings. And there is a blessing a possibility of a better world. This possibility arises when we remember that we are all connected, when we choose kindness, faith, and generosity, when we remember that each one of us matters, when we pr practice compassion, when we allow our hearts to be changed by love and wonder. This Christmas, and every day, may you be touched by such blessings and share them with all those you meet. Many of us know the story about the birth of Jesus, but some of us may not know or may have forgotten that Mary, Joseph, and Jesus 
were frightened refugees on the run from Herod, who relied on the kindness of strangers. The threat of danger means that the little family must flee to safety. In this poignant retelling of the Nativity, originally published in 2015 in response uh, to the refugee crisis sweeping the world, uh, a donation is made uh, from the sale of each book to agencies that support refugees fleeing war and conflict. At the time that this publication was uh, written, the book felt timeless, yet timely. And sadly, nearly 10 years later, it's as relevant as now as it was then. And this story is Refuge, written by Anne Booth and illustrated by Sam Usher. The man led me, and I carried the woman all the way to Bethlehem. And then the baby was born. The shepherds came first, and after them came the kings. When the last king left, the scent of frankincense lingering in the air, we all slept, and the man had a dream a dream of danger. He woke long before the sun rose and told the woman. She took the baby and kissed him. She smelled his sweet baby breath and felt his soft, warm baby skin and how his lashes tickled her cheek as he sleepily nuzzled her neck. Time to go, she said. Then they wrapped him up warm and kissed him again, and the man came out to get me. He patted me between the ears and led me out. Come on, old friend, we're off on a journey again. And we left some gold for the innkeeper, for he had been so good to us when others had not. And we set off under starlight, through empty streets, while people were sleeping, hoping for the kindness of strangers again. And we passed the shepherds in the fields, and there were whispered blessings, and the movement of sheep in the darkness, and the clasp of rough hands, and the, the love of warm hearts. And I kept walking, carrying my precious load, and the woman held the baby close to her heart. And she and the man talked about journeys and dreams and warnings and the love of a baby and the kindness of strangers. And when they rested and they were frightened, they took hope from each other and from the baby's tiny first smile. And we entered into Egypt, and we found refuge. Did you catch who the narrator was? The donkey, right? So a donkey tells the story of how he was led by the man whilst he carried the woman all the way to Bethlehem, where the baby was born. Soon after, the shepherds came, and then the kings, and then the man had a dream, a dream of danger. He knew that it was time for them all to leave. They left some gold for the innkeeper, and they were not staying in the stable because they were poor. They went through the quiet streets, hoping for the kindness of strangers, which they found. Finally, they came to another land, to Egypt, and found refuge. This quiet retelling of the Christmas story, it's faithful to the biblical account, yet it downplays the divine. There are no angels or halos. Instead, the author chooses to focus on the humanity of the event, 
and in doing so, brings home truth that is so easily overlooked amid the spectacular drama of angelic hosts and a bright guiding star. Because when all the trimmings are removed and you get down to the basics, what we're left with is a vulnerable refugee family. And that's what this book shines its light on. A subtle but telling reminder that Jesus was a refugee too. Let us hold in our hearts all of the refugees who are fleeing to find safety. And may we show them warmth and kindness during these desperate and difficult times. A Baby Was Born, written by Gwen Matthews. Once upon a time, a baby was born. Even before that baby was born, there were people waiting and wishing and hoping for that baby. The people who were waiting and wishing and hoping for that baby didn't know exactly what that baby would be like. And so they wondered. Would the baby have a smile so warm that it could melt the coldest snow and ice? Would the baby have a voice so strong that it could shake the very mountains? Would the baby be so courageous that all would be comforted, even during the most hardened hearts? But even as they asked these questions, as they imagined what the baby would be like, the people who were waiting and wishing and hoping for the baby already believed that the baby would indeed have a warm smile, a strong voice, a courageous spirit, and a loving heart. And they weren't wrong. When Jesus was born, his tiny body was wrapped up to keep out the cold. He was laid down on straw in a trough that was used to feed the animals inside of a barn. His young parents, proud and exhausted, had been forced to take a long journey far from home. Jesus' parents were two of the people who had been waiting and wishing 
and hoping for him to be born. But there were people who had been wishing and waiting and hoping for Jesus to come. These people saw hurt and suffering in the world, and they believed that this new baby, Jesus, could use his voice to spread a message of love and peace. And they knew it would take courage for him to do so. But Jesus wasn't the only baby that people have waited and wished and hoped for. People also waited and wished and hoped for you. Once upon a time, you were born. But even before you were born, there were people waiting and wishing and hoping for you. But those people who were wishing and waiting and hoping for you didn't know exactly what you would be like. And so they wondered, would you be kind? Would you be brave? Would you show love? Would you spread peace and joy? But even as they asked these questions, as the people who were waiting and wishing and hoping for you imagined what you would be like, would you be a kind of person you might grow up to be? Who would you be? They already believed, though, that you would be kind and brave and loving and that you would spread peace and joy in our world. They knew that you could help ease the suffering and hurt in the world and that you would speak out against violence and oppression. And they weren't wrong. The mission of Birmingham Unitarian Church is to be a free and welcoming religious community that encourages lives of integrity, learning, service, and joy. One way we live out this mission is by giving half-hour weekly offering to a nonprofit organization 
that shares our values and addresses needs in one of these areas, environmental action, income equality, civic engagement, and racial justice. We support a new organization each month. It is especially meaningful on this night where we hear the story of Mary, Mary and Joseph seeking shelter that the plate recipient is the welcome in, a, a daytime homeless shelter in Roy Loke run by South Oakland Citizens for the Homeless. It is the only daytime warming shelter in South Oakland County. For many years, BU Sears have volunteered there. Guests are given a, a warm place to rest, a hot meal, social services, and even a place to do laundry. But most of all, they are treated with dignity. Let there be an offering in support of our beloved community and organizations that build the world we dream about. The, this evening's offering will now be received with gratitude. Ushers, please come forward. We are a church of open minds, loving hearts, and helping hands. 
With gratitude, we dedicate this offering to the good works of our congregation and dedicate ourselves to its service. <coughs> As we reflect on the miracle of birth and the light that every child brings with them into this world, the words of Sophia Lyon Faz remind us that children are a gift to be treasured, cherished, and to behold. Sophia Lyon Faz was a dynamic innovator in the world of religious education, and her work forms the cornerstone of our liberal education tradition. She believed that Sunday schools should be experiential and engage children in free inquiry. She drew upon children's own experiences and universal religious questions, as well as myths and stories of many cultures and religious traditions. Rather than handing down the lessons we think children should know, adults should be following alongside our children as they experience the phenomena that led the great religious questions in the first place. Let them come to their own answers first so that they can put the stories that we tell them into the context of their own experience. She hoped that this method would enable children to develop their own ideas about religion and spirituality, and indeed, that is our approach with religious education, to empower children to be free thinkers and religious seekers in their own right, and that children are religious leaders too. For so the children come, and so they have been coming, always in the same way they come, born the seed of man and woman. No angels herald their beginnings, no prophets predict their future courses, no wise men see a star to show where to find the babe that will save humankind. Yet each night a child is born is a holy night. Loving parents sitting beside their children's cribs feel glory in the sight of a new life beginning. They ask, where and how will this new life end? Or will it ever end? Each night a child is born is a holy night, a time for singing, a time for wondering, a time for worshiping. Stars are bright. 
Let us pause and reflect. One candle, its flame can barely pierce the dark. That candle, though, when used to light another and then another, can light up the sky. Each time a child is born, a new light comes into this world. Each of us, like that babe, has a light within. And like the candle, when we share our light, we spark a connection, and then another, and another, growing our beloved community. So a little bit of information about passing the light. As the flame is passed from one person to the next, the person who has the lit candle stays still. Right? We all know this one. And then the person next to you will light the flame and pass it on. Ushers? can rise and join in singing Silent Night.
time we will extinguish our flames, but we will take that flame out into the world with us. Also, for those young or young at heart, our tree, if you perch around on it, we have some lovely ginger people, and you are welcome to take them in. After the benediction, however. <laughs> This is from A Christmas Blessing by Reverend Mary Gear. The story tells of a woman heavy with child, traveling with her partner to be counted in a census declared by a distant ruler, unaware of the lives disrupted or the life that is to come. May those in power open their minds and hearts to the impact of their actions on others, and especially those who are unseen and unprotected. The story tells too, of too many people and not enough housing so that the couple shelters in a stable with animals. May we know that there can be enough housing for all, housing that offers comfort, warmth, home. The story tells of a babe born on a cold night, the birthing cries unrecorded, perhaps unheard. <coughs> a child swaddled, loved, and warmed by his parents and the animals in the stable. May the cries of all mothers be heard, and may all children born into this world be welcomed, warmed, and loved. The story tells of a bright star in the night sky, heralding a message of new life, pointing the way to light, toward hope. May we have glimpses of the stars on these long, dark nights, and may we see in the starlight a message of life, of light, and hope. May it be so. Blessings to you this holiday season as we sing out with joy to the world.